Hello everyone, this is Assistant Professor Dharam Anulagat welcomes you all to this subject Effective Technical Communication. So, as you know we are moving with the first module that is Dynamic of Communication till now. The, in the previous videos, we have covered topics like Process of Communication, the Dynamic of Communication, the name of the module itself. Then we have covered three components of non-verbal communication that is Kinesics, Proxemics and Paralinguistic Features. Also, we have covered the two main topics that is importance of interpersonal communication and importance of intercultural communication. Today, let's start with a new topic that is levels of communication. There are total five levels of communication which are that first that is extrapersonal communication, second intrapersonal communication, third interpersonal communication, fourth type is the organizational communication and fifth is the mass communication. Let's understand one by one in detail. First is the extrapersonal communication. Communication between the human beings and the non-human entities is extrapersonal communication. Let have an example. When your pet dog comes to you wagging its tail as soon as you return home from work, it is an example of the extrapersonal communication. Also, one more example of parrot responding to your greeting is another example. More than any other form of the levels of communication, this form of communication requires the perfect coordination and understanding between the sender and the receiver because at least one of them transmits information or response in sign language only. Here, the non-human entities will respond you in the sign language only. He or she cannot speak. That's why in the other level of the communication, this level needs the well perfection. Second level is intrapersonal communication. Intrapersonal communication takes place within an individual. We know that the brain is linked to all the part of the body by an electrochemical system. For example, when you begin to feel hot, this information is sent to the brain and you may decide to turn on the cooler, responding to instructions sent from the brain to the hand. In this case, the relevant organ is the sender. The electrochemical impulse is the message. The brain is the receiver. Next, the brain assumes the role of the sender and sends the feedback that you should switch on the cooler. This completes the communication process. This kind of communication pertains to thinking, which is the basis of the information processing. Without such internal dialogue, one cannot proceed to the further level of the communication, interpersonal and organizational. In fact, while we are communicating with other party, our internal dialogue with ourselves continues concurrently, planning, waiting, considering and processing information. You might have noticed that at times you motivate yourself or continuously resolve to complete a certain task. Self-motivation, self-determination and the like takes place in the intrapersonal level. For example, if, if you think in this semester I have to achieve 9, CPI, 9 SPI, this is one example of the intrapersonal communication. It Also, a more best example of the intrapersonal communication is when you dream. Dreaming is also a best example of the intrapersonal communication. Third level of communication is internal communication. Communication at this level refers to the sharing of information among people. As you have discussed, interpersonal communication means communication between the two or more individuals. To compare it with other forms of communication such as intrapersonal communication, extrapersonal communication, etc., we need to examine how many people are involved, how close they are at the another physical, how many exam how many sensory channels are used and the feedback provided. Interpersonal communication differs from the other forms of communication in that there are few participants involved. There they are in the close physical proximity to each other. Many sensory channels are used and the feedback is immediate. Also, the role of the sender and the receiver keep alternative. 
For example, as we have discussed, when the sender is active, the receiver is passive. And when the receiver is active, the sender is passive. So the role of the sender and the receiver keep alternating. This form of communication is advantageous because direct and immediate feedback is possible. If a doubt occurs, it can be instantly clarified. Note that non-verbal communication plays a major role in the interpretation of the message in this form of communication because the proximity of the people involved. Interpersonal communication can be formal or informal. For example, your interaction with the sales clerk in the store is different from that with the friends and the family members. The interaction between the panel members and the candidate appearing in the interview is different from the conversation between two candidates waiting outside. Hence, depending upon the formality of the situation, interpersonal communication takes on different time. Moreover, most interpersonal communication situations depend on the variety of factors such as psychology of the two parties involved, the relationship between them, the circumstances in which the communication takes place, the surrounding environment and finally the cultural context. So, so this is all about the interpersonal communication, which is a very much important the level of the communication. Fourth is the organizational communication. Communication in an organization takes place at a different hierarchy level. As we have learned, it is an extremely necessary for the sustenance of any organization. Since a large number of employees are involved in several different activities, the need of communicate effectively becomes greater in an organization. With a proper networking system, communication in, all, in an organization is possible even without a direct contact between employees. Organizational communication can be further divided into following. First is the internal operational. All communication that occurs in the process of operation within an organization is classified as the internal operational. So when the communication is within the organization, one employee in the same organization have communication with the other employee, then it is termed as the internal operational communication. Second is the external operational communication. The work Related communication that an organization has with the people outside the organization is called external operational organization. And the last type is the personal communication. All communication in an organization other than that of the business or official purposes is called personal communication. So these are the subdivision of the organizational communication. And now comes the last type of the levels of communication is mass communication. Mass communication is meant for the large audience and requires a medium to transmit the information. There are several mass media such as journals, books, televisions and newspapers. The audience is heterogeneous and the, and the anonymity and thus the approach is impersonable. For example, press interview given by the chairman of a large firm, advertisement for a particular product or service and the like takes place through the mass media. This type of communication is more persuasive in nature than any other form and requires the utmost care on the part of the sender while encoding the message. Oral communication though, the mass media requires equipment such as microphones, amplifiers, etc. And the written form needs the print or visual media. The characteristic of mass communications are of many types. So the mass communication requires a media or you may say the medium to transmit the message as the audience, audience are heterogeneous. The good encoding by the sender is required. So these are the five levels of communication which are there we have discussed extra personal communication second is the intrapersonal communication that means the communication within an individual third is the interpersonal communication that means the communication between the two or more persons fourth is the organizational communication that means the communication within an organization is known as organizational communication and fifth and the last type is the mass communication more topics of module 1 will be further discussed in the upcoming videos. Thank you.